Los Angeles Ironman were just a few points away from getting to the finals for the first time since 2009 at the last event in Chicago, but they ended up losing to Heat in the semifinals. Veterans Alex Goldman and Marcelo Margot were on fire on the snake side, dictating the pace of the game, and the rest of the young team is starting to perform up to its potential. Chris Cat is proving very capable on the D side, along with 17-year-old Brandon Cornell. Daniel Labarra and Toe Camel have proved that they can get kills in the snake, and Alex Rodriguez is one of the most aggressive back players in the league, always looking for an opening to run through. Led by Shane Pastana, the most successful captain and coach ever to play the game, the team is starting to catalyze into the vision that they had in mind when they absorbed the best players from San Jose Royalty during the offseason. Most importantly, when they're playing well, the Ironmen are looking like a team that could win in the Champions Division, and soon. But they need to play more consistent in order to make that dream a reality here at the West Coast Open. San Diego Dynasty took fifth at the last event in Chicago and did not play on Sunday in the semifinals for the first time this season. But they won the second event in Maryland, so they are still a big favorite at the West Coast Open. Dynasty displays mastery at every level of the game and for good reason. They are the most successful paintball team of this or any era. The team is stacked with superstars and led by one of the best coaches in the game, Rusty Glaze. Oliver Lang and Brandon Short are the highest ranked players on the team and they have been on a tear this year. Short has been setting the tempo for the team early on in the prelims and Lang's timing and aggressive tendencies are serving him as well now as in any time during his record-setting career. Yosh Rao and Glenn Takamoto will be looking for kills off the break. Kyle Spicka and Alex Frazier will be attacking on the snake side with Blake Yarber pushing up the D side. Add in Tyler Harmon and one of the best all-around players ever, Ryan Greenspan, and you have a lineup which could win the West Coast Open. Huge matchup here at the 2014 PSP West Coast Open. San Diego Dynasty lost two games yesterday, and they need to win this one to have any chance whatsoever of progressing through this tournament. And also, they have to have a big day today just to avoid playing in a relegation game. The Ironman on the flip side, they went one and one yesterday. They also need to have a pretty big day, but they do have that one victory, so a little bit better on the record for them. So here we go. Ironman on your screen, and off the break, looks like Oliver Lane got shot by Marcelo Margot. So four bodies left alive for Dynasty, and Dynasty is playing down a man. They do not have one of their best players in Ryan Greenspan, who injured his MCL yesterday. So he is out indefinitely. Don't even know if he's going to be back for Cup. And it looks like Frazier's going to take the walk out of the snake. So now just three players left alive for Dynasty. The Ironman, Brandon Cornell, Mike Pax, and Marcelo Margot, Toke Hamill, and Alex Goldman, who is also actually playing through a knee injury. But now Alex Goldman walks off. So Dynasty able to get a shot on Goldman. Blake Yarber gets shot out of that cake. Yosh Rao's gonna get pinched out by the snake. Just Brandon Short left alive. He's gonna come over to the snake side. Looks like Toke Hamill got shot though. So Mike Paxson and Marcelo Margot closing in on Brandon Short. But somebody picks him up. And that is gonna do it for Dynasty. As Cornell, Paxson, and Margot gonna close that game out for the Ironmen. So. Ironman did a good job shooting Oliver Lang early, creating that advantage. And then rolling the guns, moving up the field very well. And a full team effort from, uh, from the Ironman. Marcelo Margot, every, everybody got a kill. Alex Goldman, Toe Camel, Brandon, Mike Paxton, and Marcelo. So full team effort here in the first point for the Los Angeles Ironman to set the tempo in this must-win situation for San Diego Dynasty. And, uh, you know, Dynasty... It, Going back to last event, they've lost four prelim games in a row, which is pretty crazy because they didn't lose one game in the prelims before that little slump that they've hit here. Mm -hmm. So they're going to need to pick it up today. Let's check in with the fourth member of our broadcast team, Lauren Kelly. Hey guys, I'm standing down here with Blake Yarber of Dynasty. Now, yesterday was a rough day for you guys. You lost both of your matches. Did you, last night, feel like you guys were just making mistakes or not executing, or were you having trouble figuring out this field layout? I mean, we were, nobody was on the same page. You know, that that's the biggest thing coming into this event was we felt that nobody was on the same page. We tried to make it happen. Things happened yesterday which, which forced us all into the same page. So it, it's good for today because, you know, we still have a shot at getting in. We're all on the same page now, so it's going to be different. When you say you weren't on the same page, th does that mean you didn't all agree on the best way to attack this? Right. So some of us were trying to uh, play aggressive and some of us wanted to sit like MAO. So now things happened yesterday where we now see things different. All right. Thanks so much. We've got 20 seconds on the clock. We'll see you can take this next point. Well, the one thing that Dynasty has been impeccable at 
particularly the past couple seasons, and pretty much since Rusty Glaze took over the team as coach, is, is preparation, Todd. And as, as a coach yourself, how important is preparation? Obviously, for any sports, it's incredibly important. But for paintball specifically, with all the different variables out there? Well, that's the thing. You know, it's like now you have three weeks ahead of time uh, to be able to play the layout so that, uh, you know, you can get as many looks as possible, you know. And it's like, I mean, it's just like us, you know, with Vicious. You know, we got three days on this layout. You know, we only really played, you know, one team, had like one solid day of practice against the team, you know. So, you know, that versus the teams that have played this for three different weekends, you know, being able to, as Dynasty gets a grenade penalty over there, losing Spica and Short at the same time, you know, the teams that have played this layout for separate weekends, you know, with time in between, time to think about it against different teams, you know, at different locations where the field may be set up a little different, you know, you just get to learn it more. I mean, it, repetition is what it is. You know, the re get to see it more times, you know, you're going to know it a little bit better. So Yeah, and I totally agree. So it looks like Dynasty able to pull this one out here. Tyler Harmon making moves down on that D side of the field, and and Glenn Takamoto having a good point here to confirm for him. Shot Alex Rodriguez, shot John John Kolkman. And out of every player I watched play yesterday, the best move, individual move, was Glenn Takamoto. Uh, he had a ridiculous move over on that D side of the field yesterday that was just down bodies, just going over there, just, just stacking up kills. Yeah. So Glenn Takamoto, rightfully so. Actually, he got himself a three-pack there. Also shot Daniel Labara. So three confirm. For Glenn Takamoto, let's check out this replay here. You're looking at the Ironman, and that's off the break. And then on the flip side, there's Oliver Lang scrambling out, and nothing that the last players for the Ironman could do. Dynasty able to get Tyler Harmon way down on that D side. And there you're looking at Brandon Short. So right now, Dynasty tying it up. Scores one to one with 17 minutes and 45 seconds to play here in this crucial match for San Diego Dynasty. It's also crucial for the Ironman, but you know, they they do have Let's a win. Go, Dynasty! Um, but it's gonna be, it's a Let's tough go, day for both these teams. The Ironman have to play Dynasty and Impact. And uh, Dynasty, Dynasty, they have to win this game here against the Ironman, and then they play 187 Crew, who just beat our Chaos. Yeah, 187 Crew's got another game later against Dynasty. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if Dynasty loses this game, then it could be, th then they could both end up playing for uh, relegation. You know, unless 187 crew were able to beat Dynasty later, then you, they could be two and two. Our chaos could be two and two. Still, so many things that could happen here. Yeah, there's a lot that could go down here in this bracket. You see, about 10 seconds for the start of this next one. There's Glenn Takamoto. Every look at all the pods everybody has. Dynasty is carrying a ton of paint. Brandon Short, yo, we know Yosh Rao's got 15 pods on his back, but also Glenn Takamoto and Oliver Lang. Everybody on Dynasty is carrying a ton of paint. Getting ready for some long points, it looks like. Now the Ironman, five strong for them. Slight power play here on that minor penalty, which stays on the clock. So Spica got a minor. Still 40, 35 seconds left on that penalty. The minor penalty stay on the board if you win the point. So Spica looking back and forth, seeing which way he wants to leave. Now you're looking at the Ironman on your screen. And there's Goldman scrambling up in the center, trying to shut down that snake side of the field. Oh, and Goldman takes one in the front of the gun. Not exactly sure who shot him there. Looked like he got shot heads up. Might have been Alex Fragey. Glenn Takamoto filling out to the Dorito side corner. Getting a little bit of a spread, trying to create some room for Spica to come out. Let's see where Spica goes. He gets a running start. He dives into the cake, gets in there alive. Takamoto goes around the Dorito side corner, gets into Dorito one. So Dynasty with all five bodies alive and Brandon Cornell getting shot out of that uh, Dorito won, so just three bodies left alive now for the Iron Men. Toe Camel getting in position over here on the snake, though, but Marcelo Margot getting shot off as Glenn Takamoto moves up the field. Oh, and it looks like Yosh Rao gets shot in on Toe Camel, so that's going to do it for the Iron Men. Yeah, so the Iron Men dropping bodies out bunkers. And five, perfect point right there for San Diego Dynasty. And they were on, uh, down a body two off the break because of that Spica penalty. But Spica was able to make it out alive. Glenn Takamoto getting another kill along with uh, Spica when he got out. Shot Brandon Cornell. And then Alex Frazier getting himself uh, another kill as well too. So nice work by San Diego Dynasty to take a slight lead here. 16-11.
on the clock this game brought to you by Contract Killer. Go to FightLifeSports.com. Contract Killer, long-time uh, player here in the paintball world. Also moving into the MMA and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu worlds too to make it the you know complete Fight Life brand. And they do uh, custom laser etching work for a lot of top teams. R Chaos, Houston Heat, Thunder, Infamous. So you see those awesome, crazy graphics on guns. It's a uh, contract killer. So head to FightLifeSports.com and help us support the people that support the sport. Every time I put on my contract killer clothing, I just want to go jujitsu the hell out of somebody. <laughs> Me and Maddie will take anybody two on two. We're laced up here in our CK Fight Life gear. If you want to come up here and jujitsu us up in the uh, webcast booth, we'll take it on anybody. <laughs> you want to get some? Come get some. So right now, San Diego Dynasty trying to get some here from the Ironman, though. But um, a lot of game to play out, Todd. It's too early to tell. That was a really good point from Dynasty, though. Yep. And Ironman got all five of their bodies out alive. You know, they just lost gunfights. You know, Dynasty picked them off, got their body out of the break, burnt the penalty. And, uh, you know, won that point. So after Ironman won that first one, Dynasty has come back two straight. Won the point that they got the penalty on as well. Ironman looks like they're going to get Vitalic a spin out here, who's been playing pretty well for them. Over here on the snake side, Vitalic, Rodriguez, Paxson, Ibarra, Margot, Lang, Spica, Rao, Takamoto, and Harmon for Dynasty. So we'll see here. Now can the Iron pick it up? The team switch sides. Ironman on your right, Dynasty on your left. And off the break, heavy guns for San Diego Dynasty. Ooh, looks like Yosh Rao took a couple bounces, <laughs> one from each side. Referee running in to check out Yosh. And it looks like, looks like he's clean, at least so far. Nope, now Yosh gets shot out of his spot. And also Kyle Spica dying as well too. So opportunity for the Ironman right now. And yeah, Tyler Harmon getting shot as well. Two bodies left alive for Dynasty. Well, Ironman able to make it here into the snake as it uh, looks like Jason Vitalic who comes back onto the Ironman squad, actually you know, played with Royalty last year, and that was the big story. One of the big stories in the offseason was the Royalty-Ironman merge. Still five bodies left alive for the Ironman, looking really good for them. Scrambling is San Diego Dynasty. Glenn Takamoto tries to get out to the D side, not able to do it. So that leaves just Oliver Lang to wheel and deal from the backfield, and he also gets taken out. So right now, the Ironman tying it up. Score is going to be 2-2. Two to two. So this back and forth seesaw battle here between these two powerhouse teams in a must-win situation. I'm telling you, man, Vitalic is balling. Uh, he, he shot the uh, Spica heads up out of his mirror. You know, we've seen him do that every game so far, all day yesterday, getting into a spot, winning gun battles, getting up the field, being a thorn in the teams that he's playing side. Uh, I love Toe Campbell. I think he had a great event, last event. Yeah, well, that, the, the, the thing about the Ironmen is they're getting really deep now. Those kids are getting really good, starting to get that experience and confidence that they need to perform at this level. Well, I was talking to Shane when we were practicing them on Wednesday. We went out there and had a, a nice day with the Ironmen. Um, and, you know, he was like, I, I asked him about Mouse, and he was like, yeah, you know, you know it sucks. You know, we, we really need him. But, you know, hey, you know, next man up. You know, it's going to give another one of these kids an opportunity to get out there. Because normally you'd see Mouse running the, the snake side every point. You know, Mouse would be out here like he did in Chicago. Every single point Mouse is going to play. He's in that condition. But with the injury, it gives somebody else an opportunity to get in there. Vitalich wasn't even on the roster in the beginning of the season in the top ten. And here he is now stepping up when the team needs him most at the, one of the most important events of the year, handling business. Yeah, and, uh, and Ironman are going to be real scary. If, uh, if they can get that depth to continue to develop, it's going to be real scary. So Lauren Kelly actually has a, an injury update uh, yesterday on Boom. Uh, had a, a pretty drastic injury. Injury. It looked like at first he's okay, but Lauren, uh, what's going on down there? Hey guys, yeah, I wanted to bring you an update on Chris Jensen from Boom. Uh, as you remember, he had an injury on the field yesterday where he fell onto his barrel and his barrel actually bended at a 90 degree angle. At first, paramedics thought he was going to be totally fine. They didn't feel any movement in his ribs. It wasn't cracked. Um, he just was complaining that his guts hurt and it kind of felt like he got sucker punched. But I just found out from one of the other team members that he actually went to the ICU last night with a lacerated liver, um, which is a serious injury. So we just want to give a huge shout out to Chris Jensen. In. We are all thinking about you. Everyone shower him with some love on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and we'll be thinking about you, Chris. Let's get back to this. 
Yeah, that's a, that is a really serious injury. And uh, I also um, got a text from a guy that had talked to some of the boom members, and he's going to be, uh, he actually has to stay here in town till Tuesday for observation. So, you know, our thoughts do out, go out to, to him, and hopefully he'll recover quickly. So now here, San Diego Dynasty and the Los Angeles Ironman tied up 2-2, two to 14-42 two, to play. Ironman all the way up to the center very quickly. And Yosh Rao getting shot by Alex Rodriguez. So does Brandon Short. So now San Diego Dynasty down two bodies. Just Blake Yarber, Alex Frazier, and Oliver Lang left on the field for them. So look for the Ironman to slowly and surely progress up the field. They have the body advantage. You can see that Jason Vitalich, who Todd, like you said, man, really starting to pay dividends. These younger guys on the team. And, you know, he wasn't even, like you said, not even on the roster at the beginning of the season. But uh, with that injury of, to, to Alex Goldman, who's still playing, he's just not playing the one on the snake side uh, because it, it hurts at the back of his knee too much when he you know, has to get into, the, into constantly running and diving into those spots. So Vidalich and Toe Campbell have been still stepping up to take the place, and they've been doing a good job. And here comes Marcelo Margot and Alex Rodriguez, too, and past the 50-yard line, starting to eat up bodies for Dynasty. So Dynasty forced to concede the point here, and now the Ironman go up by one. Ironman doing a really good job of shooting Yosh Rao right now out of that back center. They've either shot him or bounced in the past three games in a row. And, I mean, <laughs> once, they, once they lose that body, that really opens up the snake side uh, for the Ironman, for Vitalich to come across and for Alex Rodriguez to attack up the middle. Yeah, so right now we're looking in the pits. For the Los Angeles Ironman, very deep team. They have a lot of roster members on that squad. So a lot of guys to choose from, which is both a blessing and kind of slightly a curse too because that's the thing is you're trying to find the solid guys, the guys that are going to carry you to wins. And when you have 12 guys on the roster, uh, it, it takes a little bit of time to figure out who your core guys are going to be, where they're going to play. I mean, you know, Brandon Cornell, for instance, plays on the D side now, but he started out in um, before the season began, well, kind of more in the snake. Uh, young, got very young player, still in high school actually, but uh, then finally kind of found his groove on the D side with uh, Chris Cat. Now, again, like we had talked about, Jason Vitalich back in the mix, one of three Vitalich brothers that played for San Jose Royalty last year in the Challengers division. And now back with some of his boys who had made the jump in the, in the merger. Toe Camel, Chris Cat, Royalty players. Same with John John Colquhoun, who's on the field right now. So Alex Goldman, Marcelo Margot, Chris Cat, Toe Camel, and John John Colquhoun. So looks for Alex Goldman to probably be uh, shooting off the break and then going up that center towards the snake side. Uh, Chris Cat, and then Toe Camel will be playing on over here on the snake side. Chris Cat is going to be on that D side. And John John Colquhoun in the center with Marcelo Margot to start out this point for the Ironman. Ironman on your left, Dynasty on your right. Close game here in a must-win situation like we talked about for San Diego Dynasty. They lost two yesterday and they had a negative five point differential. So they need to win today and win big. And it looks like Oliver Lang all the way up there in the middle. Looking to take it right back. Oh, and Tyler Harmon going to get a major penalty. Get Glenn Takamoto pulled. Brandon Short coming over to fill in. But John John Colkman getting shot. Oliver Lang trying to cross on the Ironman side of the field. He's going to get shot. Two bodies alive now for Dynasty. And Alex, uh, Alex Goldman getting into the snake with Marcelo Margot on the inside of him. Short and Spicken now together. Last two Dynasty players, but nobody on the Dorito side. So Chris Cat get a bump across into that Dorito one. Let's see if Ironman can take advantage of this. They're up three to two. But Dynasty is in the box. Chris Cat coming up into Dorito two. Brandon Short gonna look to make a move on him. Nobody yeah. picks him up. Oh, Brandon Short does get picked up moving into that Dorito two. So just Spicka left alive now. And here comes Chris Cat, And now Marcelo, Marcelo Margot, Margot hunting, trying to take down Brandon Short, former teammate of his. I'm sorry, Kyle Spicka, another former teammate of his. Kyle Spicka and Brandon Short's been a couple years. Well, Brandon Short's been a long time on the Ironman. Kyle Spicka, a couple years where he cut his teeth. And right now, Los Angeles Ironman looking really good. Of course, getting a big help, though, by Tyler Harmon with that major penalty. So Chris Cat and Alex Goldman left alive. 
for the Los Angeles Ironmen to hang it up and go up by two points. The score will be four to two in favor of the Los Angeles Ironmen with 12 minutes and 16 seconds to go. Still uh, 56 seconds left on that Tyler Harmon penalty. So things starting to not look good for Dynasty again. Uh, Ironmen, you know, <laughs> that penalty is definitely going to hurt them because the Ironmen are shooting really good lanes off the break and then attacking hard, so. Yeah, the, the Ironmen are doing a good job of uh, playing that controlled aggression game, which you have to play on this field. They're shooting bodies off the break, and, uh, and definitely when they are moving up the field, they are not getting greedy, not taking big bites. Just real smart play from the Los Angeles Ironmen right now, taking this lead. You can see Marcelo Margot run down Kyle Spica. Got stuck in snake one. Let's look at it from the opposite angle here. You're going to see Marcelo come from the left-hand side of your screen and take down Kyle Spica. But really not much Spica could do at that point. So a beautiful morning here in Riverside, California for the fourth stop on the PSP Tour. The West Coast Open of Matty Marshall with Todd Martinez. And San Diego Dynasty has to pick it up here, man. This is If they lose this game, that puts them 0-3. And I can't even remember the last time that Dynasty went 0-3 in the prelims. <laughs> Can you remember the last time that happened? Uh -uh. You know, Dynasty winning the second event. And uh, looking good doing it. Also made it to the semifinals in the first event. Lost to Infamous who ended up winning that event. And also, you know, as the day progresses, we're going to be hearing what's going on in that challengers division and who's going to be playing to try to move up to play in the champions division for World Cup. Uh, X Factor went 1-1 one one yesterday, so that was a big surprise. And Revo went 2-0. Oh. So Baltimore Revo, the new guys on the block in the Challengers division, looking good yesterday. We'll keep you updated to, updated to as their, how their progress goes on. And right now, looking at Alex Rodriguez up to the center 50. That's his specialty. And he's going to wrap around, try to isolate, control that D side of the field. Ooh, and he gets one. Glenn Takamoto out of that can. Actually, that might have came from Vitalich. Alex Rodriguez was wrapping around the Dorito side of the A. No, that yeah, that was from Alex Rodriguez. Glenn Takamoto tried to wrap on him, and Alex put one on him. Alex Rodriguez still there, trying to wrap around to get shots. And then you see the back line for Dynasty on your screen, Blake Yarber. And Yosh Rao, Alex Frazee is also alive here on the snake side. Just three for them as Glenn Takamoto and, and Tyler Harmon. Takamoto got shot by A-Rod, and now Mike Paxton joins his fellow back player, Alex Rodriguez, up at the center 50. And they are going to be able to control both sides of the field now. So look for Dynasty to try to make a move as Tyler Harmon gets out of the box clean. That's definitely going to help Dynasty. They have four guns up now. Oh, it looks like Mike Paxton gets shot. So Paxton coming off. That's going to even actually make the advantage go to San Diego Dynasty. So the San Diego Dynasty, this is their opportunity. They have to do what Impact did to them yesterday and, and, and hold it down and win some gunfights. And they do. They shoot Alex Rodriguez. So Dynasty with four bodies alive. Looking like they could win this point. Only two Ironman players left on the field. Marcel Margot gets shot too, though. So it's just Brandon Cornell on that D side. Snake side completely blown open. Tyler Harmon making his move down here. Now Blake Yarber pushing up on the D side as well. And Alex Frazee all the way to the 50-yard line as Brandon Cornell gets shot out of his spot. So nice work by San Diego Dynasty. Down a body, Tyler Harmon, but they were able to fight back, get him out of the box. Harmon stays alive, and now he's grabbing that flag and hanging it up. We got ourselves a one-point match here. Score will be 4-3 to three with 10 minutes and 18 seconds to go. Both teams will be back at full strength. Yeah, there's Tyler Harmon able to come out of the box and get that flag hang. So, wow. Exciting game here. Yeah. Can't miss one. Got to see them all. Yeah. Well, that's what's crazy now about the PSP is that with the champs and challengers, there's so much at stake. Uh, and so there's just the storylines that, that thread their way through the event are deep. And we're going to see them play out. You know, that's the cool thing. So Friday, it's who showed up, who's looking good. Saturday is when things start to get decided. Who's going to be playing in those relegation matches? Who is going to be moving on to the semifinals in both the champs and the challengers division? And then tomorrow, obviously, most important day of the tournament. So the reason you play paintball is try to make it to Sunday. And we're going to see the best divisional teams from D1 through 4. So the future stars of the sport will be playing on this field here tomorrow in those divisional final matchups. And then we're going to find out who looks good heading into World Cup. Who's even going to have a chance to play for the Champions title at World Cup. And we're going to be right back, so stick around.
get ready. Yeah, I, think, I think you saw me going up there and then fucking yeah. stayed on it. Ironman on the right-hand side of your screen. The gray dye jerseys, and then on the left-hand side of your screen. San Diego Dynasty, five players alive for Dynasty. Heavy guns up, staying in that pocket. Typical play for both teams right now at this point here in this close match. Los Angeles Ironman, five guns up for them too. And they also stick in the pocket. Completely identical play for both teams. Oh, but Glenn Takamoto gets shot out of his spot. So Oliver Lane's gonna take his position and roll his gun towards the snake side. Try to keep Toe Camel and referee. Running in, he's going to look over Oliver Lang. Oliver Lang getting checked out, and it looks like Oliver Lang is clean. Ooh, Marcelo getting shot out of that can. On the snake side, he's running off. Looks like we got Al Fernandez getting a run over here for the Ironmen. Dynasty. Losing Takamoto and Spica, so they are in the two towers in the middle with Harmon out on the cake on the Dorito side. Ironman with the one body advantage, but a little bit better spread. They got Toke Hamill out here on the snake side temple, wrapping all the way on the inside, around the outside, and forcing his way into the snake. Gets in there alive. Harmon gonna break out to the Dorito one. Oh, Harmon gonna get shot on his bump. Oliver gonna try and stop the bleeding. Fell all the way out to the Dorito side corner. He makes it. Referee getting scouring over Yosh Rao right now. Yosh Rao holding down that D side of the field. But the Ironman with a uh, two body advantage here. As Fernandez, Goldman, Hamill, and Chris Cat still alive for them. Time ticking off this clock. Yosh Rao coming off, so it's just Oliver Lang. And again, things aren't looking good for Dynasty. Rusty Glaze concedes the point. The coach of Dynasty blowing that horn to concede the point, which will give the Ironmen five points. So they're two points away from victory right now, which would send Dynasty 0-3. Wow. See. Not with Dynasty. Does that, does that assure that they're... Well, if they go 0-3, they're definitely not going to be playing tomorrow. That's, that's certain. But does that immediately put them into a relegation game? Uh, I would say yes, because they'll be 0-3. They play Upton 187. Even if they beat 187, they'll be 1 and 3. And then 187 will also be 1 and 3. Art Chaos, they are 2 and 1. Impact is 2 and 0. And the Ironmen would be 2 and 1. The Ironmen still have to play Impact. So Ironmen, the worst, if they were to win, the worst they would be would be 2 and 2. So. We'll look at it more. We'll be right back after these messages. Let me see if I can figure anything out over here. You shouldn't say anything more than what I said to you. I fucked up. I should have, like, You're right. back in. I mean, one ball. We have the five right here. Hey, we have the five right here. Yeah. Right? Because we want to turn the odds. So welcome back here. Looks like a timeout just been called, probably by San Diego Dynasty. If I was the Los Angeles Ironman, there's no way I'd be calling a timeout, barring major drastic something happening, because they really have stolen the momentum away from San Diego Dynasty right now. But, but, big but, eight minutes and 36 seconds remain though, Todd. Only down two still. Dynasty could still get back in this match. Well, let's check in with Lauren Kelly before we get back into this game. 
Hey guys, I'm standing here with Marcelo Margot in the pits. Now you guys are ahead two points, five to three. This is a huge point for you. You could get a three-point lead. Um, what have you been noticing out there on the field? This has been such a tough weekend for Dynasty. Are they not playing cohesively? Like from your perspective, what mistakes are they making? Uh, I think you nailed it, actually. You know, I don't think they're playing as a unit. They're not really communicating too well. And uh, they just kind of look like their head's not in it. You know, Oliver's trying to make a bunch of moves. I don't think his team's really following him, following him up. So uh, right now we have the edge on him. What do you think are the most important factors for a team? Obviously, both Ironmen and Dynasty are top house teams with a lot of weapons um, at their use. What's going to differentiate between the teams that are successful and those that are not? It's just showing up to play, you know, like Maddie always says up there. Uh, it doesn't matter the names on your back. It's about showing up and being ready to play for that match. So, you know, whoever comes out and wants it more is going to take the win. All right. Well, Ironman is up 2 points, 5 to 3. We got 30 seconds on the clock. We'll see if Dynasty can get another point on the board. Thank you. Well, their backs were against the wall to begin with at the start of this game. And now, more than ever in this mat or in this tournament, Dynasty uh, must perform at their top level. And, and win this game to even have a chance because Todd, we were, you know, as we were in that short break, breaking it down, uh, it, it doesn't look good for Dynasty. If they lose this game, they will be playing in a relegation match. Yeah, you know, it's just a question of uh, uh, which seed, because they're gonna be playing 187 later, um, who is one and two. But here we go on the breakout. It's like Dynasty does get all five bodies out alive and they do shoot. Ibarra on the break, Cornell fills out into that cake. Alex Rodriguez always looking to attack. Coming up to that snake side can, second can. He's gonna wrap around and look to come out to the pin. Does he get shot? He gets shot. Does he get a kill out of it? He does not. Uh, well, looks like Lang's coming off though. Not does sure. He? Yeah, Lang's coming off. Coming out of that center. Okay, there he is. Yeah, so Alex Rodriguez fully committed to try to take out Oliver Lang, was able to do it, had to sacrifice his body and able to get that elimination. But right now it is four on three as Abara had taken that early walk. So it's now Jason Vitalich, Brandon Cornell, Mike Paxton left alive. So Paxton uh, and Cornell and Vitalich trying to maintain this lead. Seven minutes and 40 seconds to go. Dynasty absolutely has to win this point and they absolutely have to win this game. And the Ironman know that they're looking, starting to look really good with their new lineup. And now past the 50 yard line, looks like Blake Yarber is going to town over here. And he's gonna take out the last player. Amazing move by Blake Yarber, getting himself a three pack on that D side of the field to blow that point open for San Diego Dynasty. Beautiful work over there. Yeah, nice move by Blake Yarber. Blocked out Brandon Cornell with the second Dorito. Came up and shot Paxson and Vitalich in the back and then went and gave Brandon Cornell a face fold down there, sitting in Dorito one, looking on the inside. Had no idea he was coming and no idea because the kills came off so fast that Cornell didn't even have a chance to react before all of a sudden Blake Yarber was right up on him, putting three or four shots directly in his goggles. And so there's still some fight left in San Diego Dynasty. We'll see if they can tie this game up here. Seven minutes and eight seconds to go, so still some time to work with. And the Ironmen seeing their lead slowly, slowly but surely start to fall. But uh, they're gonna both these teams are gonna reset. No penalties, so both teams will be five strong. So I'm wondering who, uh, who both these teams are gonna send out for this next point. Again, both these teams have real solid rosters from top to bottom. Yeah, I see Marcelo Margot, Alec Goldman. Looks like Toe Camel. Yeah, we've seen the Ironman though. Every time Dynasty comes back, Ironman pushes harder. You know, Dynasty comes back, Ironman pushes harder. You know, looks like Mike Paxson's coming out. Lang, Spica, Short, Takamoto. I get Blake Yarber back out there as well. Here he comes. Yeah, I would definitely send Blake back out for sure. That guy's a, he, he's, I've hiked mountains with Blake Yarber. That guy's, in, he's, he can go all day. Uh, so you definitely want to put him out to spin another one for that amazing run through that he just had, that three pack that he got. So for the Ironman, they have Paxson, Rodriguez, Hamill, Alex Goldman, and Marcelo Margot. And on the flip side for San Diego Dynasty, looks like Yarber, Takamoto, Lang, Spica and Short. Spica and Short will be over here on the snake side. Lang will be in that middle. And Glenn Takamoto shading towards the D side. And Blake Yarber definitely on the D side. He's a D side specialist. few seconds before the start of this point. Dynasty on your right, Ironman on your left. 
Iron Man still with that one point lead. And on the breakout, Dynasty and the Iron Man. Oh, but the Dynasty's first to strike. Mike Pasty coming off early, off the break. And the referee is scouring over Toe Camel. But it looks like he's clean. So four bodies left alive for the Los Angeles Ironman. San Diego Dynasty with five. And now Spica gets into the snake. Brandon Short follows him up right behind him. Insert bunker snake side on your screen. There's Brandon Short now. That's who's trying to keep Spica from moving up. Alex Goldman in that center bunker. His gun towards the snake side. Toe Camel right behind him. So conservative mindset here for the Ironman trying to stave off the attack. Oh, and Alex Goldman gets shot out of his bunker. Yeah, Alex Goldman ended up in that little wing. Not always the best place you want to be unless you got some help. No, oh, Toe Camel dies too. So here comes San Diego Dynasty. Still five players alive. Looking really good right here in this point. Looking like they're going to tie it up. So like we were saying, still some fight left in Dynasty. As they close the gap off the strength of Blake Yarber's move in that last point. And now here comes Kyle Spica doing his work on the snake side. So Brandon Short and Kyle Spica handling things over here on the snake side, getting some help from Oliver Lang, shooting Mike Paxton off the break, and then Toe Camel got shot crossfield from Glenn Takamoto. So all of a sudden, Todd, we got a tie game. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, every game out here, you know, this is what we expected. You know, just such a good bracket. Such a, it's a bracket of death, man. Impact Ironman Dynasty. 187 and Art Chaos all in the same bracket. Already today, we saw Art Chaos lose to uh, 187, get upset by them, six to five, which puts Art Chaos two and one, and 187 one and two. And the Ironmen are one and one right now, and Dynasty's 0 and two. Impact, uh, they're still two and zero. Oh, have yet to play today. They play next against Art Chaos, so things are getting very interesting here. Hey, I mean, what if Dynasty wins their two games today, and? Uh, well, I guess that won't happen because Dynasty's playing 187 next. I was going to say, what if uh, 187 won both their games? <laughs> then they would throw everything all over the place. But Yeah, so there's the schedule for the rest of the day. Next game up coming at you. In Edmonton Impact playing their first one against our Chaos. After that, Dynasty and 187. And then Impact and Ironman to close out this morning bracket. And then we move to the afternoon. A couple Challengers Division games. We see Excessive with their new lineup taking on Thunder with their new lineup. And uh, Infamous went 2-0 yesterday. They're going to be taking on Top Gun. Infamous trying to fight to get out of that Challengers Division where they've been for the past two tournaments after dropping down. And then, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, they, they, they won the first event, dropped down at MAO, and then didn't make it back at Chicago. And so... And then also down there as well as Aftershock and, uh, and X-Factor. We'll be bringing you updates from the Challengers field all day. And then after those Challengers division games, Damage and VCK will begin the afternoon bracket in the Champions division. It falls with Houston Heat and Vicious, Legion, VCK, and then Damage and Vicious and Heat and Legion to close out the day. So as things progress, we will give you guys updates as to who's in, who's not, who's going to be playing those relegation games, both the champs in the Challengers division. Two teams from the Challengers Division will be moving up here from this event to play in the Champions Division for World Cup. And two teams from the Champs will be heading down. And that is why this event is so interesting. That is why the fourth event, the West Coast Open, has become one of the most important events. Because if you do not play well here, then you don't have a chance at the most important tournament you know, for some of these high-powered teams. You know, at best, two of the three top teams that are that are down in the Challengers division, at, two, at best, two of them will be coming up. And when you have teams like Revo going 2-0 and o yesterday, uh, you never really know what's going to happen. Thunder went 0-2, Excessive went 0-2, Infamous went 2-0, and o, Aftershock 2-0, and o, X Factor 1-1. and 1. So things are also just as interesting over there as they are here in the Champs division. But that's why the PSB is awesome right now, man. Lots to talk about. You're always on the edge of your seat. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, especially this game right here in front of us. 5-5 five, five tie. Six minutes left to go. Ironman sending out Paxson, Rodriguez, Hamill, Chris Cat, and Margot. Dynasty sending out Yarber, Freji, Short, Lang, and Rao. Battle of the Titans going on all day here in Riverside. Yeah, and we got some nice weather. Not too hot. Sun slowly starting to creep its way up. 14 seconds before the start of this next point. Dynasty on your screen. Playing this big point for them here. Tied game. Blake Yarber, Alex Frazier, Brandon Short, Oliver Lang, and Yosh Rao. 
So a little different from the point that was just won by them. No Kyle Spica. And on the flip side, Paxton, Rodriguez, Hamill, Chris Cat, and Marcelo Margot to try to take the lead here for the Ironman. And Alex Rodriguez goes up the gut, up the center on your screen. And Dynasty loses Blake Yarber on the D side of the field. He comes off early. Still four bodies left alive for them. Referees are in there checking out. Uh-oh, look for a penalty. Anytime you see a ref running in, and that's going to be a penalty. Minor penalty on, I think, maybe Oliver Lang. Yeah, I think that was Oliver Lang. So that is not what Dynasty wanted to happen here. You can see uh, Yosh Rao shaking his head as he's forced to go to the box. So now just two bodies alive for Dynasty. It's Alex Frazee and Brandon Short. They were able to shoot Mike Paxson. Oliver shot Paxson off the break before he got that penalty. So four bodies alive for the Ironman. But it's, this is going to be a tough one here for, uh, for Dynasty. And yeah, especially now that. So now you want to blow that horn, maintain the time. Alex Frazier is going to get run down before the horn is blown and the point is conceded from San Diego Dynasty. <laughs> Alex Frazier a little unhappy about the couple extra that Toke gave him. I don't think Toke heard the horn. Horn kind of blew like right as he was getting to the point where he could shoot Alex. So. Yeah, sometimes uh, if you're the coach and you see that coming, you lose the point anyway. You just got to save your buddy's back. Yeah, that sa saving quick. the pain, <laughs> saving the time, too, of having to clean up once you get back into the pits. Alex didn't give him that look either, like, hey, jerk, what's going on? He gave him that look like, hey, man, what's the deal, bro? Uh, I thought we were cool. <laughs> hey, Toke, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the leader of the team right there, Shane Pistana. And also, hope you guys got your fantasy team in. If you had uh, Chris Cat on your fantasy team or Alex Rodriguez, they're scoring you some points for the Los Angeles Ironman. Or if you had Alex Frazier for San Diego Dynasty, he has five confirmed. And uh, you guys are playing for a, a package from Raza, getting custom jerseys, outfit your team. And we're going to be right back as looking in the pits right now for the Ironman. They're up by one. Six to five is the score. Stick around. 40 seconds. 40 seconds, Ironman. Are we Still in the pits with Los Angeles Ironman. You see Impact getting ready to roll for their game coming up next. Our Chaos taking on Edmonton Impact after the conclusion of this match. Five minutes and ten seconds to go. And off the break. Ironman on your right. Dynasty on your left. Heavy guns for Dynasty. Five guns up for them. Better field position right now for the Ironman. As Alex Rodriguez continues his attack in the center, which has been paying off for the Los Angeles Ironman. And it looks like the first body to drop is Yosh Rao for San Diego Dynasty. It's tough to double up those bunkers, man. It gets real small. Toe Camel out on the snake side. Dynasty losing that first body. Nobody over there on the Dorito side now. And Todd, no points left to concede for them. This is a race to seven. So this is, a, you know, we talked about must win situation all day today for Dynasty. Well, literally must win situation right now for them. They lose the next point. Uh, that's it. That means the Ironman take the victory. The Ironman will go two and one if Dynasty can somehow pull this off. Ooh, Four Glenn minutes Takamoto and 20 seconds. Just taking one right in the front of the gun. That might have been from Alex Rodriguez, who has just been up in the middle having a festival this game. But he gets shot by Tyler Harmon making the bump out, who gets into Dorito 1. Hey, he did his damage, man. Alex Rodriguez getting two kills, and that's good enough. You can get your two kills and walk off if you're the guy running up to the center 50. So right now, time starting to tick off here. Three minutes and 55 seconds. Just three players left alive for San Diego Dynasty. So can Brandon Short, Tyler Harmon, and Kyle Spica Step it up here. Oh, looks like Toe Camel into the 50 snake. Almost got a shot in on Tyler Harmon over there. Brandon Short bumping out of the snake side can, going into the Dorito side tower. He's going to put some paint on Toe Camel. Chris Cat making a bump up into the Dorito 2 for the Ironmen. Mike Paxson and Marcelo Margot still alive in the backfield. Spica bumps out to the snake side corner. Literally fighting for their team's life in this tournament right now. San Diego Dynasty, Kyle Spica made that bump out. But Toe Campbell in real good field position here. Harmon gumping up into Dorito 2 for Dynasty. 
seeing if he can get a shot in on Hamill. Brandon Short. You can see the intensity in the body language of the gunfights of San Diego Dynasty. They know that they have to clock in here right now and get a kill just to even it up on the body count. So tense moments here in this prelim matchup between the Ironman and San Diego Dynasty. The Ironman 1-1 one one before this game, Dynasty 0-2. And, and let's see if Kyle Spicka can drop a shot out on Toe Camel. Nope, not able to do it. And the Ironman, they're in no hurry. They don't need to go anywhere. They have the point advantage. It's 6-5, to five, and also they have a body advantage. So really all the pressure right now is on Brandon Short, Tyler Harmon, and Kyle Spicka. And the Ironman with a good cross right now with Marcelo Margot. In the back of Snake 1, shooting across the field at Harmon. And Mike Paxson in that Dorito side tower, looking across the field. If anybody tries to make a move on their players, they should be able to cross it up. Dynasty going to have to look to win a gun battle here and make some moves. They have to. They have to win a gun, fight or, a gun battle or put themselves into position uh, to get a cross field shot. Because the Ironman, they're not going to go anywhere. They're in really good field position right now, looking over each other. Chris Cadden did D2. Toe Camel's in the 50 snake. He's got Marcelo Margot right behind him. Brandon Short repositions from the back stand-up temple to the back stand-up can to give Kyle Spicka a little bit more support and put some pressure on Toe Camel, who's really the thorn in the side right now. Tyler Harmon also, and here comes the big move. Kyle Spick is going to completely commit and try to trade out, and it looks like he is able to trade out. So now it's two on three. Brandon Short takes the snake off that chaos. Marcelo Margot, he moves up a little bit and then decides to retreat and head back into snake one to watch in front of Mike Paxton, realizing that with a minute and 25 seconds and only looking at two bodies, that Brandon Short and Tyler Harmon have to attack. They cannot, they cannot let time expire in their bunkers. The only way at all to have any chance is to push forward and try to make something happen. Marcelo Margot looking across the field. At Tyler Harmon, Brandon Short coming up in the snake three, and he is going to get picked off. Uh, I believe that was from Chris Cat across the field. And you can see the frustration, Todd, as he was pounding his gun into the ground because he realizes that with his death, and now with the rundown from Mike Paxson taking out Tyler Harmon, that that is going to be the nail in the coffin for San Diego Dynasty in this game. And, and almost assuredly puts San Diego Dynasty in a position they've never been in before. They're going to most likely have to play in a relegation game Sunday morning. They still have one more game left today against 187. However, and this is this bracket's got a little crazy with 187 beating our chaos uh, this morning. But going 0-3, we'll see how things play out the next three games as this bracket ends their prelim matches. But most likely, almost, cer almost certainly, it looks like San Diego Dynasty is going to be playing in a relegation match. Yeah, at 0 and 3, that's definitely going to happen. They've never done that. We've never seen San Diego Dynasty in a relegation match. They're one of the few teams that has not been put into that position before. Yeah, here's the question. Dynasty versus Crew. Crew got a win this morning. If Crew, who is the relegation masters right now, yes, can get a win against Dynasty, they put themselves at 2 and 2. That might be good enough for them to maybe put themselves in a tie. Probably will either have they, they, may, they, may, they may be able to give themselves a chance to not have to play for relegation because Impact's going to play Art Chaos. Art Chaos is 2-1. and one. If Impact wins, then Art Chaos will be 2-2. Two and two. And uh, if it comes down to it, then you know, 187 will have had the head-to-head uh, the -head win over Art Chaos. Iron Men still play Impact. If Art Chaos can beat Impact, Iron Men, who are playing hot right now, they have a chance to beat Impact. They could be 2-2. Two and two. Too much crazy stuff going on still. Still way too early. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, like, Todd, like you're just breaking down. Things are getting really crazy here in this bracket of death. And that's exactly what we expected to see when all these top teams are all in the same bracket together. You know, obviously, every team that's in the champs division uh, earned the right to be there and is there for a reason. Uh, however, still uh, lots, of, lots of paintball to be played today. And then, of course, the afternoon bracket uh, is also going to get interesting too as well. So, yeah, what an insane matchup here that we just watched. But Dynasty taking that loss. And uh, and next up, man, we're going to have uh, Edmonton Impact taking on Art Chaos. Uh, I don't know, Todd, well, 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 let's check in with Lauren and we'll head to that matchup. But Lauren, what do you got for us? Hey guys, I'm standing down here with Alex Rodriguez and Mike Paxson from Iron Man. Congratulations, you guys just won, making it your second win this weekend. Yeah. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the X plays. You got down to the X off the break multiple times, I think like four times, 
during uh, that game. What is the most effective strategy for getting out there? And then once you're out there, how productive can you be? Well, the biggest thing, like, when I go X off the break, it's just living behind your gun. Use your gun as a bunker, you know, just shoot back because they're shooting back at you. And, you know, hopefully you trade with one going up or you make it. And then once you get in there, you just have to read the paint, see where the guns are, and then just work off of that. Obviously, the closer you get to the other side of the field, the less you can see. So what bunkers do you kind of want to lane up on when you're at the X? Uh, well, you know, it's tough because if they're anywhere wide, you kind of have to shoot the Dorito side to protect yourself. But if they're in the uh, little cake and over, you can kind of you can kind of play it and play the wrap. You just got to keep your eyes open and just uh, you can see pretty much every bunker on the snake side when you wrap. So it's just got to play smart and choose your shots. Now, Paxton, you were out there for that last point, and that was a stressful point because you guys needed it. You, yeah. Either Dynasty was going to be in risk of relegation or you guys could have right. been at risk of relegation. Exactly. So as um, everything was happening, what was running through your mind when you knew such high risks were at stake? Um, pretty much, you know, I saw we were in the snake, we were going down, and I'm like, all right, we're good over here. So pretty much was just trying to keep them out of the snake. Um, I think it was uh, uh, Spicka made a great move to the corner, so I kind of actually put a hurt in our put, put a little hurt on us. But uh, CC held it down. Everybody was doing real good. So it was it, once it started folding down, it, he came down, ran our guy down. I was like, oh god, please pull him out. <laughs> what so. did you see that um, it let you know it was cool for you to run through and shoot that last dynasty player out? Oh, uh, when they said, hey, it's just it's just the Dorito only. I was like, oh yeah, we can get him. <laughs> <laughs> um, from your perspective, being such an experienced player, what mistakes was Dynasty making this weekend on this layout? I don't know. I mean, they played real well on this layout at practice. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, and they're really good gunfighters. They really, you know, they shoot real well. So uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what actually was their problem. It was, you know, but I mean, they're all great paintball players. So I mean, yeah. Well, congratulations, uh, Iron Men. Just be Dynasty, making Dynasty lose all of their matches this weekend so far. Stay tuned to see what happens next.